Hello, and welcome to this podcast where we're going to discuss the informative abstract. There are many types of abstracts that you'll run into. One of the most common that you will uh, find are the descriptive abstracts. These are outlines uh, of topics covered in an article or research paper. It describes the content but it does not substitute for actually reading the piece. It's not something that um, a CEO or a manager could read and not have to read the larger source. Um, It works as kind of a table of contents. It's a very descriptive piece. Informative abstracts, on the other hand, provide information on the substance of the piece. It's often the only thing that uh, managers or a CEO uh, will read or have time to read. Imagine that there are thousands of papers, especially if you're working for a pharmaceutical company. Um, and if you are, a, you know, a vice president in charge of marketing or something, you may not, well, you, you know, you don't have the, the leisure and the time to sit down and read all these, you know, hundred page uh, reports. But if you read that abstract, Uh, you'll get all the essential information you need and it will suffice for uh, the entire article. So it's very important that you gauge that. As you go through um, writing it, revising it, going through the peer review, uh, ask yourself, is this something that would um, pass as an informative abstract that I would not have to read the rest of the the article for this to work? The nuts and bolts of an informative abstract include um, uh, some this information. It identifies uh, information in the article. Um, it, it's a concise restatement of the main point and the background problem. Uh, you'll want to discuss the methodology used to to, find, to make the find uh, and find the key findings. Um, that methodology, you know, double blind testing surveys, whatever it is that they're using, and whatever the the idea behind the the study is, you'll want to uh, make sure that you you understand the methodology and write about it so that um, the your audience will understand the methodology. And you want to discuss the major conclusions uh, included in uh, the document. So. You, know, you you become it's a very rounded piece of writing this and it has an informative abstract and the process uh, typically informative abstracts are 10 percent the length of the article so you know imagine that you if you have a 10 page source so a 10 page article uh, an informative abstract would typically be one page if it's a hundred page if the source is a hundred pages long uh, you, it would be roughly 10 pages um, the longer an article is, uh, the more fuzzy the, the length of the informative abstract gets. Uh, it's not an absolute you know, formula that every, you have to fit in at 10%, uh, but it's a good starting point. Um, since most sources that students come up with are you know, more in the range of the 8 to 12 page uh, journal article, um, you're looking at an informative abstract being a page to a page and a half, and you know it need, that needs to be a very good page to page and a half. Um, now, for the assignment for this class, you'll you'll choose one article to write your informative abstract. And this article or source, make sure that it's long enough. Don't take a two uh, you know a two page general piece of information and try to turn that into an informative abstract. It simply won't work. Um, you know, make sure it's up to date too. Uh, if it's not up to date, you know, if this is a you know a piece of writing that uh, you know uh, technology from the 1960s, uh, it's not going to have a lot of value uh, to your audience or to you. So make sure your source is up to date. And the process of writing the informative abstract, you want to read the article, uh, note the major points of the article, you know, make, highlight those, make notes on those, note the research used, and extract the major conclusions. Now, um, as far as this goes as being part of the assignment for Module 2, you only need one communication context for both the informative abstract and the annotated bibliography. The, they have the same audience, if not the same uh, delivery method. 
And finally, when you start the peer review process, make sure you share your communication context with your reviewers. Uh, this will give your peers uh, the opportunity to uh, approach the context and understand uh, where the informative abstract is coming from, not just the source, uh, but also some background. Now, uh, as I say often enough that, you know, if this was a face-to-face -face class, um, that wouldn't be necessary because you'd be right there as they're reviewing it and, um, you know, get it, you'd be giving them that context verbally. Um, that doesn't happen. Um, in uh, an online class, you know, we, but so we have to build our synergies elsewhere and that using the communication context as a starting point for building that synergy is, is a very, very important thing. Um, then you want to give yourself time to write and revise. Do not wait until the last minute before this is due to, to, to do your rewriting and revising. Um, you know, the, you, Give yourself time. It may be a short document that you're writing, but it needs to be uh, particularly clear and well written. So thank you for your time, and I look forward to seeing your informative abstracts.